Hey guys, thanks a lot for joining me. Today's look is a Valentine's look. I decided to just go extremely dark, do something a little out of the ordinary on the eyes, and it incorporates um, some very smoky colors as well as some burgundy, reddish type tones. I was really pleased with the way it turned out, and I did use my Coastal Scents Revealed 2 palette. And it will be a start to finish full face tutorial, so here we go. I did a test run of this look the other day. I was so happy with the way it turned out, but I was able to get a little insight on how well it actually wore throughout the day, and I can make a couple changes for this video, so yay! I have been using this Makeup Forever Step 1. I'm trying out the Nourishing Primer. Really, really like it, especially if your skin's a little on the dry side. I mean, your moisturizer can handle a lot of that, but it's one of the few moisturizing primers that still has a nice, um, I don't know, silkiness once it absorbs. I am using the new Maybelline Dream Velvet Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation in the shade Nude. Um, I've been trying this on and off for a little while, but I wasn't quite ready to talk about it when I did my new drugstore products video. It just, I hadn't quite come to a conclusion yet on the best way to apply it. And yesterday I used that Real Techniques sponge um, just to blend it out, and I thought, yes, this is the method for this foundation for me anyway. It kept its matte look, but it just really looked skin-like. I was just very happy with the finished result with that. So I really like using the flat side of this sponge, and I mean, to me, the effect I get from it when I use it, I feel like it's just as good as the Beauty Blender if not a little better to me because of this nice flat side you get to work with. And then you can still use a little pointy tip in here around the eyes. Or you can bring in the Micro Mini Beauty Blender, which I do like that a lot too for concealer. And that's probably kind of old news because I know this Real Techniques uh, blender sponge has been around for a while, but I've been a brush user, a hardcore brush user for quite some time, so. Certain foundations, though, I really see the appeal in using a sponge like this. Now I'm going to use my Estee Lauder Perfectionist. It says Youth Infusing Brightening Serum Plus Concealer, and I wear this in the shade 2C Light Medium. So it does have this end that has your little wand applicator, but you don't really want to use this like full on, like I'm going to paint on a whole lot of concealer, because this is just kind of like... I think of it as a priming step for the stick end of this concealer. Like it just, I don't know, preps the skin a little bit, keeps it from looking too dry. So I don't really even think of this step as doing a whole lot besides that. I really rely on the other end to do the do the dirty work as far as concealing goes. Then the stick that comes with this is a pretty large stick as far as stick concealers go. I don't know, it just seems pretty substantial. And I just use this all throughout the under eye area. You'll notice I didn't even really feel the need to use a corrector today. So either that could be a reflection of me sleeping better at night with the baby not waking up so much, or this is a really good concealer. Maybe a little bit of both. And I just kind of put it where I want to brighten as well. And I don't find that stick to be too terribly thick and difficult to blend, but just because I've got this dampened beauty blender handy, <laughs> I'm just going to use it to tap out that concealer. Then I'm experimenting with a new powder to set the under eye area, continually in search of something that performs as well as the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. So what I have here is by Beauty Counter. It's the Mattify Skin Finishing Powder. And this brand, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but it's really, really conscious of ingredients. I've read they've outlawed like over a thousand ingredients that are commonly in other makeup products, but you know, they're not letting them in their products to keep them extra safe and natural. So if that kind Concept appeals to you, this might be a brand to look into. I've purchased several other things as well. I may do a video on that, um, but haven't gotten to try anything much besides this. But it's got the little lock here over the shaker, which I like, and then I just tap some in. I'm actually just going to use this sponge and pick some of that up and just dab it on the under eye area. Kind of feels like baking a little bit, but more of a light approach to it. I'm not really caking on the powder too terribly much. But I was wearing this um, on my under eye yesterday and I really liked the finished look of the makeup. And it also, it, it wore fairly well. It was a very dry day yesterday. I could feel dryness elsewhere on my skin, but I didn't think my under eyes looked 
too dang bad, so that was nice. Next I'm gonna do a little contouring with my e.l.f. contour palette here. I love this shade. It's a great cool tone contour color. And I'm just gonna take this in the hollows of my cheek first. And this is the Sigma Small Contour Brush. It came from like a travel set from long ago, um, but I will list all of the brushes I use down in the uh, info box as well as all the products. And for blush, I'm using this City Color B Matte Blush in the shade Sweet Pea. It's kind of a neutral type tone when you look at it, kind of a rosy neutral blush. I'm using my Milani Blush Brush. Yes, Milani has brushes. I did a video on that uh, just recently, so you'll have to check that out, see what worked, what didn't. This one definitely did work. These are really pigmented blushes, though I have some more intense shades in my collection, and they definitely do pack a punch. And then I am going to take a tip bit of this matte uh, shade in the highlight palette and just go like right over the border here to keep it nice and bright. And I am going to go in with a more luminous highlight, uh, but I'm going to do it after I finish the eyes. For now, a little spritz of the Glossier, ooh, stop talking first, <laughs> the Glossier Rose Mist. And then for my brows, I've been using this combo a lot from NYX. It's their Micro Brow in the shade Espresso. So it's a nice, rich, dark brown that's still very cool. This product, it does have the little spoolie brush on the other end. It reminds me so much of my Anastasia Brow Wiz. I mean, the size is just the same, just the same precision. And then this NYX Tinted Brow Mascara, I have it in the shade Black, which really is like a dark, dark brown, and I just love the hold that this product has. It doesn't have like the little bitty, you know, um, microfibers that really attach into your brow hairs like Benefit's Gimme Brow does, but as far as just being a good, long-wearing, great hold, tinted brow gel, this works really nicely. There are a lot of shades that it comes in. All so my friend Norma had sent some makeup my way, including this little pamphlet, and I was just really drawn to this look here, which incorporated dark burgundy reds, but they were just used full on. You can see how they're practically pulled all the way up to the brow, you know? And so I thought I'd like to do a dramatic type look like that. And this came with some um, Lee Swatier palettes. I believe that's the way you say it. Well, that was my inspiration. I am using my Coastal Sense Revealed 2 palette. One of my favorites of the Revealed palette family. But before we get to that, I'm going to prep the lids a little bit. I've got some Too Faced Shadow Insurance, which Shadow Insurance, I've, I've talked about this over the years, but I feel like it's gotten more liquidy or it just doesn't stay as good as long in the tubes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Sometimes it gets really runny. Sometimes it's fine though. Um, but I'm going to apply that all over the lid and up into the crease. And then I've got this NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the shade Black Bean. And I am going to use some of that on the outer part of my eyelids. This is just a little synthetic up and up shadow brush that I can use to blend that out a little bit just into the crease but primarily on the outer part of the lid. I'm also going to take this um, Maybelline Lasting Drama Pencil in Cashmere White and I'm going to take that a little bit around my tear duct. I don't want it on there quite as heavily as I did it yesterday but I still want that brightness. It helps out the shadow just with the staying power a lot too. Then I take a Q-tip and just soften it out just a bit. First shadow I'm going to is this satiny finish white or kind of off-white shade right here. I'm going to apply that on the inner half of my lid and take it right around the inner corner as well. Then I'm taking this shade, which is kind of interesting. It's sort of like, a, I don't know, a brownish mauve. Very interesting shade with my Sonia Kashuk Small Shadow Brush. And I'm going to just pat that first on top of my dark base. Then for my crease, we're just going to be layering up the mauve reddish tones. So I'm going to start with this shade over here, which is kind of a mid-tone matte. I'm just going to get that in the outer part of my crease first and just work it all the way inward. And as I blend, you know, slowly working it upward as well. 
Next up, I'm going to pull in this matte black. Really nice black in this palette with my um, Makeup Academy 315. This is a very pinpointed brush. I can put the shadow exactly where I want it. And I do want it right here in the outer corner. And I want it to pull upward with a really nice outer V. Airbrush for blending and keeping the blending on the top side of this shadow. And here's where the magic starts to happen. I am taking this color right here. I do think it's kind of the brightest, boldest of the berry, wine, reddish colors here. I'm using my Milani blending brush to pick some of that up. And I am going to just take this on the border of that black and create a pretty intense reddish look right up here between um, the crease and the brow. And I realize we've all got varying amounts of space in this area. I have quite a bit of space there between my eye and my eyebrow. So you may lessen the amounts, you know, relative to the size of your eye area. But just like the picture, you know, I'm really wanting this reddish color to pretty much meet my brow. Something I really notice about, you know, when you're applying shadow in this way and you want it to still be kind of soft, but you want it to make an impact and your shadow is very pigmented, um, really pay attention to the amount of pressure you're applying to your skin with your brush because I feel like I am barely touching my skin when I'm doing this step. And I'm still getting color applied because it's a very bold shade, so. Just keep that in mind. Next, I'm going to take my um, Maybelline Master Precise Skinny. This is in the shade Defining Black. And I'm going to apply that to my lower inner rim. I'm also going to draw that down, like just between the lashes a little bit here. And I'm just going to use my smudger brush to go over that a little bit. That liner does set, but it gives you just a little bit of time to play with it. Then I'm going to use my pencil brush with this matte red that's a little less bright. I'm going to use that on the outer part of the lower lash line here. As we go inward, I'm going to use this shade that's got a little bit of shimmer to it, a little bit of brightness. And just take that in to meet that highlight type color. Then speaking of this shade, I am going to sort of reinforce that color a bit more. Um, just now that we've blended so many dark things around the eye, I'm going to take a little bit more of this, pull it inwards so we've got a little overlapping there. And with that same shade and same brush, I am going to go right around the brow area and just give a little bit of separation between the brow and the shadow. Then I'm just going to do a very thin line across the upper lash line using my Physician's Formula Eye Booster Pen. Then I'm just going to curl my lashes. I'll apply a little bit of this CoverGirl Plumpify Mascara, not because I love it, but because I just have it. <laughs> and I'm going to put on false lashes anyway, so might as well go ahead and use this. And a little lower lash mascara with my CoverGirl um, Clump Crusher Water Resistant. And these are the Salon Perfect 614, I believe that's right. Yeah, 614 False Lashes. Um, they've got a lot of length to them, but they're not quite as thick as my Huda Beauty lashes. And I kind of want that because I want a bit more of this look, the shadow look to show through. So I'll just apply some glue to these and put them on and then I'll be right back. All right, so lashes are on. And do you ever find that once you get your lashes on, it's like it gives you the guts to do more things with 
with your eye look than you initially planned. The same thing happened yesterday. It's like I kind of had to put the lashes on, see the lay of the land, and then go in with a little more shadow. And um, that additional shade that I'm going to go with is this red right here. So while this one has a little more brightness and intensity, this one, when sheared out, is still going to give us that nice reddish look we're after. So again, with the Milani uh, blending brush, I keep wanting to call that a crease brush. Very small amount on the brush. I'm going to focus it on the outer part here. And yeah, just add a little bit extra to the look. Another thing I loved about this look in the picture was just the intense highlight coming off the cheek there. So I'm going to use my L'Oreal True Match Lumi. Um, this is the one in rose. I really love this highlight. Like this was my um, favorite drugstore highlight for the Emily Awards featured on my blog. Picking up both of those shades with my Up and Up highlight brush and I'm actually going to take the color closer to my eye than I normally do with highlight and I really like the effect from that. It just creates such a contrast with this dark, dark eye. And bring it down onto the cheeks slightly as well. And then on the lips, I'm using a combo of my NYX High Voltage Lipsticks. This nude is called Mirage. And it's a real full-on nude. And these are very, like, creamy lipsticks, by the way. That's not matte, not drying at all, yet they're very long wearing. It's a really great lip product from NYX. As you can see, I just focused that shade on the inner part of my top and bottom lip. Then I'm going in with Flutter Kiss, which is kind of a soft, uh, like dusty rose. And I'm pulling that shade in from the outsides. They practically blend like glosses on your lips. It's interesting. It's not that I don't like the full-on nude nude sometimes, but I really am into the definition that something slightly deeper is going to give me. Plus, I just think this works with the eye really well. All right, guys, rollers are out. Here is the finished look. Very, very rich, deep, smoky eye, um, but a light lip. I'm really pleased with the way this look turned out. It's very dramatic. I do like pairing it with the lighter lip, though. And I think whether you have a Valentine or not, whether you're doing anything remotely fancy for Valentine's Day or not, it's still fun to just get dressed up, even if you're around the house. How many days am I in full glam makeup just around the house? It's just for the love of the makeup, you know? So thank you guys for sharing in that with me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.